Welcome to Up Close. My name is Tapa Mutsekua. Up Close is a daily current affairs show that profiles men and women making waves in their industries and gives newsmakers a human face. The program also gives newsmakers a platform where they can share their stories, vision, and even tackle uneasy concerns without scorn or vilification. So stay tuned for the next half hour as we get up close with Zimbabwean entrepreneur extraordinaire, Dr. James Makapa. Dr. James Makamba is a businessman with diverse business interests in telecommunications, retail, mining, hospitality, and consultancy. He served as a consultant to Lonro in Zimbabwe and Botswana. He later established a thriving consultancy business which represented international corporations in various sectors within the SADC region. He partnered with uh, Telecell, Africa's first mobile phone network, which he still serves as its chairman in Zimbabwe and is a board member internationally. I could go on and on and on on your CV. So let's start by welcoming you, Dr. Makamba, to Up Close. Why don't you just call me James? <laughs> oh, I'll do that. The last time I did that, I, I, I was disciplined. No. Um, I said to ladies, said, listen here, yeah. <laughs> I have earned my credentials. You will not yeah. use my first name. Just call me James. Thank you so much, okay. James. So who is James? Who is James? Mm -hmm. He's the guy you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more about James. How did you begin your path in business? I think the inf influence initially came from my father. Uh, who was a contractor in a rural setting, in a rural area, in the um, uh, district of Shamva, okay. north of Bindura town, in um, what was known as Madziwa Reserve. Um, he was a contract plower. Uh, he had a grinding mill. Okay. So for me, seeing people coming, uh, to my father mm -hmm. to request for services. And my father going out, at times I accompanied him or with my <clears throat> elder brother, seeing him fulfilling you know, these services and mm. providing a service to the community. I think that's where the inspiration you know, started. Mm. I must have been mm. four or five then. Okay. So would you, uh, then let, looking at your father's business, did it, did it grow or did it remain just, you know, a small uh, service provider within the community? It was a small service provider, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh, the seed got planted there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then uh, where did you take it from there? So you finished high school and then what happened? Finished high school and um, you, you, you will not believe this. Started working with uh, the Catholic church okay the uh, branch of the jesuit fathers and for a moment contemplated mm -hmm. uh, joining priesthood oh, wow. uh, when i took the subject to my mother she said you mean <laughs> i want to have grandchildren <laughs> no <laughs> so <laughs> it had a very quick quick death um but whilst i was working there yes. at the um, the catholic center in arare uh, which was salisbury then Yes. Um, next door was the Department of Education and their audio visual services uh, was located there. So I started participating in schools broadcasts and um, after about 15, 18 months, the manager, uh, Mr. Sifas Rangwani said, I think you have a good broad broadcaster's voice. Okay. Uh, why don't you try a career in broadcasting? So I auditioned with the then the Rhodesia Broadcasting Corporation. Yes. And uh, that was the beginning of um, a radio career, which lasted some 13 years. Wow. So it was radio, then later television. And what kind of programs were you doing at the time? I was purely commercial. Okay. Advertising. Okay. Uh, so sponsors would come to me or I would go to them. Yes. All advertising agencies would come to me and, um, you know, propagate on behalf of their clients. Mm, mm. Yes. So at this time, you are not studying further or anything like that? At that time, I was, I was not studying further. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens with, uh, with uh, fame, you begin to attract attention and people begin to engage with you mm -hmm. at a business level. So time came where I felt that I needed mm. as I got more mm -hmm. and more involved and deeper and deeper 
uh, into the community. Yes. Because from radio, I then got engaged, you know, with the community. Okay. I became a councillor, later on became a town board chairman, uh, the equivalent of a, of, a, of a mayor. It was then that I decided to, uh, to study further, to study further mm -hmm. and acquired a Bachelor of uh, Business Administration and okay. MBA. Okay. And then uh, what did you do your doctorate on? What did I do my doctorate yeah. on? Yes. It was awarded on business leadership. Okay. Because from radio, you're shaking your head. <laughs> no, we, no, no, no. For, forgive me, forgive me. Uh, we're having a conversation <laughs> while I'm having a conversation with my producers in my ear because they, they, they're talking, so I'm trying to tell them to keep it down. <laughs> but we still so have our super, conversation. So you're super woman in managing <laughs> you know? situations. Isn't that what women are supposed to do? <laughs> Talk to different people at the same time. Yes. So, so I worked in, yeah. in, in radio mm -hmm. and later on <clears throat> a, a government education channel mm -hmm. uh, was going to be shut down. Okay. And I put a consortium together uh, with friends and associates, and we took that over and renamed it Joy TV. So we ran it for some six years. Okay. Um, was extremely successful, uh, but as we went on, you know, mm -hmm. government policy mm -hmm. changed, and uh, we shut the station down. Which period was this that Joy TV was uh, running? The nineties. The nineties in Zimbabwe. Yes, in Zimbabwe. Yes. Okay, and the focus was education. No. It, it was a government station mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. carrying, you know, education programming, mm -hmm. but we converted it to a commercial TV station. Okay. Just like you have Mnet. Yes, or, yes. Am I allowed to say Mnet? Yeah, I know. You're allowed to say it. You're allowed They're not to say paying that. me, I can assure you that. <laughs> no, we're broadcasting on DSTV, <clears throat> so yes. I think that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Makama, that's interesting. So, that was like your first um, uh, big business enterprise was yes. Joy TV. No, no. The, the first big enterprise, first yes. was getting on radio. Okay. Because that gave me the platform. Yes, of course. To, um, you know, for, to do all the other things, uh, you know, that I did then. We acquired a production house. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, at that time, it was called Blackberry Productions. Okay. <laughs> before, <laughs> before the name Blackberry, you know, came, uh, came on the map in a uh -huh. big way. Then um, immediately after independence, we acquired... You may know he's well known in South Africa mm -hmm. from a Mr. Mike Duffy okay. and a Mr. Patrick McLaughlin, what was then the largest production house okay. in uh, Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We produced some 275, a combination of radio, TV, commercials, wow. jingles, and so on. Wow. Um, mm. So that, I would say that was the first um, major business venture mm. at that time. Mm. Yes. So at the time you... You've got experience now in community development issues, having worked as a mayor, uh, you're in broadcasting. How do you then change and, or should I say, progress to telecommunications and so forth? <clears throat> so what happened was, in the town I was, I was town board chairman, mm -hmm. okay, because we didn't have municipal status then. Okay. So uh, the status came later, so the gentleman who is there now is a mayor, but I was referred to as a town board chairman. Okay. Um, I was persuaded uh, by the local population, you know, to represent them in the party. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I became a publicity secretary of uh, the ruling party in the province of Mashonal and Central. And from there on, I was again persuaded to go into parliament. So I was a legislator for, you know, five years and then was elected to the policy-making body mm -hmm. of, uh, of the party, mm. uh, known as the Central Committee. In the let's, let's hold it there, Dr. Makamba. I need mm. to take a break. And when we come back, I want to explore that. It seems that you are uh, a public official, uh, not willingly, but more like persuaded and pushed into that position. You're watching Up Close on Channel 404 on DSTV. We're going to take a quick break. See you just now. You're watching Up Close, where we get to know Africa's industry leaders and pioneers. On this edition, we're getting up close with Zimbabwean entrepreneur, Dr. James Makamba. 
Thank you so much for joining us, James. Let's, you know, you started to take another direction, mm. which was becoming a public official. Yes. But it was not because out of your own desire to become a public official. People kept on seeing you and your skills and what you have and kept on pursuing you to move in that direction. You could say that. Mm -hmm. uh, you could say that also when you live or work in a community mm -hmm. and exhibit, you know, a, a certain talent. Yeah. I think people Which always is leadership, yes. yeah, come forward and, you know, persuade you to, uh, you know, to work with them. Mm. Yeah, but in between, I did a lot of things. You know, as that was happening, I had some, some grocery stores. You know, I um, was a financial consultant uh, with the Old Mutual. I had a very mm -hmm. successful uh, selling career. Mm -hmm. We were called financial advisors. Uh, which made me qualify uh, as a member of the Million Dollar Round Table and attended um, the Old Mutual as its own convention. They call the Top 25 Convention. Okay. And the first one I attended was in Hong Kong. But the Million Dollar Round Table, you know, took me to various places, Dallas, New York, wow. you know, and so on. So in tandem with the, the broadcasting career, the politics, uh, there were also all these, uh, you know, things, you know, going on. And was there any time to, for a family? For family, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I got married um, uh, quite early, okay, um, at the age of twenty-eight, to uh, a girl that's called that's Irene. Young. My wife's name is Irene, mm -hmm. and uh, went on to have you know four children, uh, two do two daughters and two sons. Mm -hmm. um, one of the daughters is late, died in a horrific car accident, you know, two years ago. Mm -hmm. She had her. Mm -hmm. Was it, was it here in South Africa? In Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, yes. Okay. Let's talk about family, family mm -hmm. life, and bringing up children as a busy businessman and a politician, especially during this uh, phase of uh, Zimbabwean uh, politics. Mm. Now you have moved to South Africa. How difficult has it been bringing up children in, during this phase? The... I think when you are young, you know, yeah. just everything happens naturally. Okay. Um, you know, I... You I have the energy for it. You, 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 I came across a saying the other day that uh, these days it's only the poor who can afford to have children because the rich are planning. They plan where will they go to school, <laughs> private education, of course. holidays and so yes. on. But when you are young, these things just happen. You meet a girl, you get married... <laughs> there was no family planning, you know, you, yeah. you, you start, start having a family, a family yes. and, and you just move on. So yes. the family and, and your career, they just, they grow in tandem with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and as I say, you know, I was extremely lucky. I, I married a, a God-fearing woman and um, I traveled a lot. Mm. And, you know, she, we both took care of the children, mm. but I think in any family, uh, the mother is always, mm. you know, up front. Mm. The mother is always, you know, with the children, spends more time with the children because the challenge is then, you know, face the men. You are the main breadwinner. Mm. So, um, so during that time, that is when uh, that led me to Lonro. Okay. <clears throat> Lonro then was run by a well-known businessman. He's late now, you know, Tiny Roland. What happened, as a matter of fact, Andrew Young, you may know him, he was um, ambassador, Ambassador mm -hmm. Young. He served in the Jimmy Carter cabinet. Okay. And after having an unauthorized uh, meeting with Yasser Arafat, uh, there was a protest, mainly uh, from a particular lobby group in America, that he should leave cabinet. Okay. And after that, he went and became mayor of Atlanta. And he used to bring trade missions you know, to Africa okay. every year. So um, I attended one of these trade missions, and as a result of that was awarded a, a contract to uh, import and distribute uh, stay soft raw and soft and free. So I'm the first one to bring those products. Eh? Next time you see them in a hair saloon <laughs> um, in Southern Africa. Wow. That's where my partnership okay. with Lonro started. Okay. You know, we set up shop in Botswana mm -hmm. and had a staff of 29 in Renberg and um, worked with a, a girl was very was a Zulu newscaster, mm -hmm. Sokwanda Sokulu. I don't okay. know if you remember. Her. Yeah, she's late now. I mm -hmm. understand. She was like our face, okay. um, our spokesperson, you know, for that venture. So that was my first business foray into into 
South Africa or into mm -hmm. the Sadak region. Mm -hmm. so, um, so did you decide, at which point did you decide that you're going to actually move the family from Zimbabwe to here? I never moved. <laughs> you spent your time here. <laughs> I'm nomadic. I, I, um, so, so we do these um, cosmetics business, mm -hmm. you know, with Lonro, mm -hmm. and four years down the line, uh, Mr. Oh. Roland says, well, you have done well, young man. Well, I was young then. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, requested me to become a consultant to Lonro PLC, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was based in London. Mm -hmm. So from Botswana, Zimbabwe, I moved uh, with my family to London. Mm -hmm. So the children, you know, then I think the girls were in Form 1 and Form 2, the first two years of secondary education. Mm -hmm. And the boys were just beginning. And they all ended up, you know, getting educated in England. Mm -hmm. But um, I still kept my base in Zimbabwe. I was, okay. you know, going up and down. Mm -hmm. So I worked with Lonro in... Um, diverse, uh, you know, portfolio. Um, I looked after huge accounts, you know, like Boeing Aircraft. We did Mercedes-Benz uh, utility trucks to the municipalities and, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, that is when really my global uh, business okay. interaction, yeah. you know, really started. Mm -hmm. And um, in that process, you know, of traveling, mm -hmm. going to different African countries, um, I later met with... Um, Mr. Mikor Waitare, uh, who was actually brought to, to my office mm -hmm. uh, by a friend uh, who is also in telecommunications, much bigger than me. <laughs> and uh, that was the beginning of, um, Telesel. of Telesel. Okay. Uh, Let's te hold it there, um, uh, Dr. Makamba. Things. James. <laughs> James. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. <laughs> Let's hold it there and then we're going to continue chatting. You. Uh, you're watching Up Close and we're chatting to James Makamba. <laughs> Stay with us. You're watching Up Close, where we get to know Africa's industry leaders and pioneers. And on this edition, we are getting up close with Zimbabwean entrepreneur, Dr. James Makamba. Uh, James, let's just wrap up that uh, period of your life mm. of telecells beginning, mm. because I really want to talk about um, your passions and your visions, because a lot of young entrepreneurs out there mm. who are watching us have this conversation. Okay. So, so I meet then with uh, Mikoro Waitare and Joe Gatt, the founders yes. of Telecell and established the company in, um, in Zimbabwe. So it's grown huge. It's one of the three largest networks, sorry, one of the three mm. networks in Zimbabwe. Mm. We are number two. Um, and then they asked me to join the board of Telesel International, okay. which was operating uh, in nine African countries. Mm -hmm. So again, that sort of fortified my African cross-border, you know, business involvement. Mm, mm. So um, at the time of um, President Obama's election, I attended one of the inauguration uh, functions in London. Okay. And it inspired me that, you know, it led to the formation of a foundation. Mm. You know, IBAMO, I-B-B-A-M-O, mm -hmm. which stands for Inspired by Barack and Michelle Obama. <laughs> so my life now, yes. uh, you ask where I'm headed, yes. I'm headed towards charity. I'm interested in, you know, raising money, funding education initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, I recently established the first book. I'm enjoying that. We are going to consolidate mm -hmm. a communication platform and again, find way back into television, radio and um, digital services. Mm, fantastic. So then that means the community uh, developer did not die away. He is re-emerging again. What does Ibamo do? Ibamo raises money um, and intervenes in education initiatives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we uh, fund scholarships, we uh, fund symposiums, anything education related. We're busy building um, libraries at the moment. Mm. Uh, we're commencing with Where one. specifically? In Soweto. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the Eastern Province called? Uh, in, in Eastern Cape. Cape. In Eastern Cape. Yes. Yes. Okay. But we are all over the place. We are the it's, schools. It's quite uh, interesting that you, um, your 
you know, your, your work as a community developer, I'll say even a social entrepreneur, is spread out throughout the SADC uh, region. One would have assumed purely that you're a Zimbabwean, that you would probably just focus on uh, social issues in Zimbabwe. Well, I'm Zimbabwean by birth, but I'm African. Yes. So the future of Africa is for African citizens to work across the border. Mm. We need to break down these, uh, these uh, trading barriers. Mm. We need to do away with visas. We need to move towards one currency. Mm. We need to share skills um, all the way from, you know, Cape you know, to Cairo. Mm. So, yes, I'm born in Zimbabwe, but um, I'm African by spirit, and I work anyway in Rwanda, in Nigeria, in Kenya, in Malawi, and um, I seriously believe that this is the, the future uh, mm. of African growth. Mm, mm, mm. Is uh, uh, inter-border trade? Inter-border trade mm, mm. and um, pooling resources, you know, as, um, as Africans. Mm. Um, we are very quick and are always admiring the United States of Africa, sorry, the United <laughs> States of America, yes, but exactly. all it is is 53 states, so it's 53 mm countries in Africa, you know, coming to mm. together, doing away with the red tape and improving infrastructure and communication, you know, channels. Mm. Um, we have a long way to, to you know, to go. Uh, we are still playing catch up, but I'm confident mm. that one day Africa will take the leadership uh, mm. from the likes of China, America and so on. It may take time because we have a lot of resources, you know, which uh, they don't have. This is why they are, they are attracted you know, to Africa. To Africa. And mm. then what would you say to a young entrepreneur out there who's just starting off and, you know, not very clear about which direction their uh, business career is taking? Very quickly, zero in on what you are passionate about. Mm, mm. Learn, learn, learn about that industry. Okay, invest in education. Uh, because the prodding in the dark uh, will not get you anywhere. Mm. You have to learn mm -hmm. about whatever industry, whatever business, whatever subject you are interested in, mm -hmm. and that is, will give you the platform to excel. Mm. And finally, um, I'm, I'm tempted to go straight there. Yes. <laughs> are we going to see you in politics again? No. You're still very young. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> we, 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 this is it. Some people must participate in politics. Yes. Some people must participate in business. Some people might, must participate in community development. So I did my bit in community development, sorry, in politics. politics yes. I'm now focused on this, the community yes, development, yeah. business development, breaking down trading barriers and making use of uh, the many, many contacts that yes. I accumulated over the years. Yes. So no to Mr. Politics. No to <laughs> politics. <laughs> Dr. Makamba, thank you so much for making the time to chat to us. Remember when we meet... The it's name is James. James. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank you. James. Thank you for Thank inviting you. me. You've been watching another edition of Up Close. So see you same time weekdays on DSTV channel 404. Goodbye.